Okay, time to shift our perspective. We have thought of porous materials as a material where we have channels and the channels are well defined. Uh, so then we can uh, think of the flow channel characteristics. The diameter of of the channel is it uh, big uh, area, a big diameter or a small diameter? Is the channel uh, straight? That is, does it have a low tortuosity, or is it very squiggly, having a high tortuosity? And what does this cross section look like? It is, a, is it a perfect circle, an ellipse, uh, a square, or, or what is it? So that's one way to, to think of a porous media. Another uh, way is to think uh, of the packing material. So if you create a porous media by packing small spheres, for example, you can start of the, uh, by thinking of and describing the porous media by describing the packing material like the packing density. Have you packed it close together or is it a bit more loose? The particles you have used, are they all the same? And if they are all the same, do they have a large diameter or a small diameter? What is their shape? Are they very spherical or are they very irregular shaped? And uh, we will use here a, uh, something called the sphericity which is defined as the area of a sphere with the same volume as the particle divided by with the actual area of the particle. And you have the formula here and the sphericity is always less or equal 1. So for a perfect sphere the sphericity is 1. When you have laminar flow in a packed bed the cosine karman equation is uh, often very useful. And it looks like this. Uh, the apparent velocity is the porosity cubed divided by y minus uh, porosity and that thing squared. You have the sphericity squared, uh, the diameter of the particle squared, and then you have divided by 150. We come back to that. And then the delta p divided by mu l, which you recognize from Darcy's law. Uh, now the tortuosity and channel cross section uh, built uh, are built into this empirical constant 150. So you can actually derive this equation just from theoretical considerations, uh, assuming that you have a, a perfect circular transection and actually tortuosity of the uh, that is the square root of two 1.4. Uh, we said laminar flow. When is the flow laminar? Well, we we're used to using Reynolds number to, to find out if the flow is laminar or not. But what is the characteristic length here? It's a bit difficult to use uh, Reynolds number because we typically use the, the channel diameter or hydraulic di diameter of the channel to as the characteristic length. And now we don't have information about the channel we have of the packing material. And thus, uh, it's often, uh, we often use uh, the modified Reynolds number, which is defined in terms of the diameter of the particle instead of uh, the diameter of the channel. So the modified Reynolds is uh, the diameter of the particle times the density divided by the viscosity times the effective velocity. Uh, and if the modified Reynolds is less than one, then we have laminar flow. And if it's larger than a thousand, then we have fully turbulent flow. <coughs> now, if we have turbulent flow in a column, uh, then we need to use another equation, uh, Burke Plummer's equation. And in that equation, uh, V increases slower when uh, the pressure we apply increases. And you see that here that if you have v squared here, uh, and in the early equation we have v here. <coughs> uh, and if you have something in between, uh, not fully turbulent, not purely laminar, you can use Ergen's equation. And this is actually the two equations combined. You see, if we, uh, this part here is the same as the thing down here. 
And this seems similar to the thing we had up here. And actually, if you uh, see that you have delta p divided by l there, if you look at this equation, delta p divided by l, well, you move things to the other side, and you're left with this. And here you see clearly that we have v in the laminar term that comes from Kumsenik Harman, and we have v squared in the turbulent term, which comes from the Burke Plummer's equation. Now you can always use the Ergern equation because that's valid also when Reynolds, uh, the modified Reynolds is less than one and when it's larger than a thousand. But uh, especially if you do things by hand, it becomes a bit messy because you have more terms to uh, take into account.